Oh, honey, I was married at 22. I was definitely <laughs> getting it in. That you can put on the well, show. Lou was, yeah. <laughs> Not that kind of show, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> After dark, I thought that I thought this was my. <laughs> This isn't my interview. This is not my audition. audition. Yeah, Yeah. this is the pilot episode. (laughs) Our intro music is just a zipper followed by some seventies porn. (laughs) (laughs) Zip. (laughs) Yeah, instead of instead of the beer can cracking (laughs) music, it's gonna be zip. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) maybe Uh, followed by a. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. Oh, we are classy. All right. Here comes some not porn music. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for drinking, and thanks for joining. I have been joined by uh, the buffest over there on the Midwest, and that's... <laughs> That's that flexy guy. How's it going, eh? Yeah, it's going pretty well over here. Or not there. Or, oh, yeah. Over there? Yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, over there. Over, <laughs> over, over here, over there? Nailed it. And, <laughs> and here to tell us how bad all of our accents are. From the East Coast, which is the Beast Coast? I don't fucking know. The it's Beast Girl Coast. Melissa. <laughs> what up, what up? Yeah. Your accents lighting, are not the best. No, they're awful. Her lighting is fantastic tonight. She's got this whole Rembrandt thing going. All the filmmakers out there are like, oh, really? Everyone else is like, what the fuck is Rembrandt lining? It's like a model shoot. That, yeah. That's what it's like. Yeah, it's like one side's got a little more darkness. The other side, it's it's what you want when you're when you're shooting interviews and, and movies and whatnot. Anyways, I'll get off of that. And I'll say, <laughs> check us out uh, on all the socials at uh, beer girl underscore Melissa. Flex me a beer underscores in between, and the easiest one because there are no underscores. Craft Beer Republic, everybody. And uh, don't forget promo code unfiltered if you're on the old Tavor. Uh, we got a lot to get to today. We have a voicemail from the homie Chew Your Beer. Classic. Got, um, yeah, always. And we've got some booze news to talk about, including some weird fucked up. I don't know what the hell is going on. A brewery closed, then open, then closed, then open. I'm so confused. Uh, and uh, some Thanksgiving fallout. So, anyways, let's get on to some hydration and answer the most important question of the night. In a world where craft beer is king, a world where muscles are bigger than growlers, only one tongue can guide us. One man, one tongue, one tongue jobber. In this world, we must find out what is flex drinking uh without further ado um the suspense tonight flex is drinking uh only in wisconsin's new glarus brewing raspberry tart new glarus new glarus yeah try and get it i dare you just kidding <laughs> you, you can get it from trades uh <laughs> but I, I know i've talked Spencer's about this working on it right now yeah that freaking guy what i love that guy i know i've talked about this beer on the show before pretty highly just because uh well, how good it is. It's seasonal beer they do here. Uh, on Untapped, get this, Greg. 48,900 ratings. And it's okay, got a 4. I just 4. thought 4. you were going to say IBUs, and I was about to die. And be like, Come does on. the scale even go up that <laughs> There, there are no IBUs anymore. Okay. No, That's way too West Coast yeah. for flex. <laughs> just under 49,000 reviews, and there's a 4.2 overall rating. That that's, is pretty That's insane. obnoxious. Yeah. Um, it's got a stone esque description. Can we say Ooh. that anymore? Yeah. Can, can well, we say that? It was annoying we... whether they're craft or not. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So uh So strap in everybody. Yeah, strap in this uh it's uh four four percent lambic frambois. Mm. Is that is that correct? Nicely frambois? Done. Yeah, yeah, I'm that's how on. I say it. I'm not even French. Check that shit. <laughs> um oui, oui. so ladies and gentlemen, treat yourself to a rare delight. The voluminous raspberry bouquet will greet you long before your lips touch your glass. Serve this Wisconsin frambois very cold in a champagne flute. Then hold your glass to a light and enjoy the jewel-like sparkle of a very special ale. Oregon, Oregon, whatever, proudly shares their harvest of mouth-watering berries, which we ferment spontaneously in large oak vats. Then we employ Wisconsin farmed wheat and year-old holler tau 
hops to round out this extravaganza of flavor. Whew, done. I mean, I can't breathe after that description. I was like yeah, trying to you. breathe for you while you yeah. spoke, and yeah. I'm really excited to hear how what, this tastes. Well written. Um, yeah, well written, but I think you've earned yourself that beer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love a good Lambic. Can I just tell you this real quick? So when I was like 16, 17 years of age, I had some family members who would bring some Lambics to mm-hmm. Christmas and whatnot, and then just kind of everybody would... You know, dabble in, try them out, peach lambic, cherry, raspberry, so on and so forth. And uh, it like was actually the Lindman's I, brand. Yeah, I think that's exactly Lindman's. what it was. And uh, that so that was actually like one of the first beers, fruited beers, whatever I've ever had. And, you know, they're delicious. So uh, on the schnoz here, tons of raspberry. Um, do you ever smell a beer and you just go, wow, that that smells sour? Like, I, I don't mm-hmm. know if there's like a scientific yeah. description. Uh, we call to it what funky. that is. I'm pretty funky? sure we call it funky, right? Like well, when you get well, like a really good sour, like a farmhouse I, ale, it's funky. When I think funk, I think like that farmhouse, like sweat sock kind of like the, thumb, Really? Because I thought it was more yeah. of like yeah, hey. festering like, well, fruits that have been fermenting. Because I'm with more like, like sometimes sweat, a sweaty sock. That's what the funk no, is. No, well, th- this is not, then this is not funky, Mel. There's okay. no sweat. There's no socks. There's no hay. It just smells like a, like sour tart. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you just stick your well, nose in something, and the only descriptor is like it smells like sour. To me, that makes total sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's like okay. uh, you know, super light raspberry, and then like sour. So then, as we warm up the old tongue jobber, <laughs> <laughs> oh, extra one warm. more for good luck. <laughs> you just got to make sure everybody out there driving your cars. I hope you pulled over first. Woo! Someone's driving with a boner. Um, <laughs> so. I'll be editing super, <laughs> super heavy on rasp- uh, the raspberry flavor. It's sweet. And then on the back end, you definitely get a little bit of a tartness, but it's not overbearing like a like a sour ale or anything like that. It's like probably the most well-balanced beer I've ever had in my entire life wow. when it comes to like the fruit flavor to the sweetness and, you know, then into tartness. This is phenomenal. L- one more sip here. Well-deserving of that. Yeah. 4.2 or whatever. Yeah, it's a f- yeah, 4.2. Um it's a little bit carbonated, not too much. Super light bodied. Uh finishes not extremely dry, but definitely a little bit dry. Um a little bit just came back up on the gas end. Um <laughs> <Sorry>. heard that. <laughs> I heard that through the mic Wasn't that and I'm like, weird? did my body just do that and I had I, no I, idea? I didn't even I do it. Out. I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it came through the mic at us, Flex. We heard maybe, it, felt it, uh, smelled I it. I hope you can Wall smell it. Though. Jeez. Yeah. Maybe we can edit that out. Um, I, it like it, I think it's a selling point of this podcast. This is a 100% <laughs> wow. phenomenal beer. This should be a five, five out of five accumulative rating on, on wow. top. Wow. 100%. I, this I is always stellar. love to describe a Lambic, or in my opinion, because obviously I'm very amateur and I know... We never want to say smooth, and that's not what I was going to say here in this case, but like it always has such a creamy kind of mouthfeel, and it's very like tangy almost. That's kind of what I mm-hmm. loved about the Lambics, yeah. that it's champagne but it's also rich and luxurious, and it makes me feel like I'm drinking something expensive that's not beer. I feel I just, you on that. Um, yeah. do, you th- do you think tangy and tart are kind of one and the same, or do you yeah, think that I feel there's like, a difference in that? I think for me, the tanginess includes that creamy kind of mouthfeel. I think okay. for me, that's what tangy is. It's got the tart plus that velvety flavor and texture. Um, fun fact, that's how I got Diana to try beer for the first time. My friend is a wine drinker, and I'm like, we used to do this segment for Beer World, and I'd get her to try stuff and be like, well, you like this though, right? And it's beer. And that was the first one, and uh, we kind of piloted our tastings together on that. I've done that also. Like when I've, mm-hmm. I have a, one of my good friends, his wife does not or did not drink beer. And in order to bring her over to the dark side, we start with sours and we, especially like the, the barrel fermented ones that really have that sour fruitiness, not mm-hmm. like the bullshit, you know, popsicle sours or whatever, like real <laughs> fruity, real sours, but not, not too crazy tart. But, um, and we've, we've brought her over and now, you know, we can share a lot of sours and Berliners and gozes with her and that. stuff like that. That's She's still exciting. not digging, you know, the IPAs and that stuff for the most part, but I think sours are a good gateway. Absolutely. I agree. I 100%. Like, IPAs are not going anywhere, but they're also not 
really what beer is 100%, even though we love them a lot. Well, like, I was going to say, just because we love them, they're, they're doesn't not, mean everybody does. They are Some not for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. No. Yeah. Took my wife a long time to come around on the IPAs. And now she's starting to drink mine, and I wish you'd go back to where she was. <laughs> Stick to your lagers and your sours. Leave my, leave my haze boys alone, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. We're all haze boys. Everyone, like, within a, or outside of a hundred mile radius of Wisconsin is very very jealous right now so yeah we actually have so, so funny story i hooked up with a couple of illinois folk earlier this summer from the gram uh sunny sipping and the beer brewing nuke her husband oh, and they fine. live they live like northern illinois they were up here in wisconsin for a wedding or something like that they actually drive up across the border hit a grocery store in southern wisconsin and just load up on <laughs> new glaris spotted Smart. cow and whatnot yeah and then because of that conversation, I also found out that the, the there's this one store in southern Wisconsin. They're the number one uh, sales point for New Glarus Brewing in the entire state hmm. because of that reason alone. People that just everybody just over. jumps the border, buys the beer, uh, Smokey and the Bandits back to Illinois. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty, yeah, it makes sense though. Uh, well, very good. Let's. Uh, you guys enjoying the World Cup at all? A little bit here and there. You know I am. I've, I've watched about 48 seconds of it, and that was 49 <laughs> seconds too much. Oh, you're killing me. Can't stand it. I don't care. And boy, am I laughing my ass off at all the idiots that went to the World Cup and are sober as fuck right now. Didn't they have high-end tickets, though, that you could drink if you spent like $20,000? Well, so oh, here, yeah. here was what I was under the impression of. Okay. So you, you can't drink in the country of Qatar? Is that what it is? You can sort, there's very you specific places drunk. you can drink. You cannot you can't be drunk. Be drunk yeah. in the streets From what at I all. was under the impression of is they were going to have certain sections in the stadiums where you were going to be able to drink. And then if you got drunk, you weren't allowed to leave the stadium until you were quote unquote sober. And, and then I, it, w it was about two days before the tournament actually started. And they said, "Yeah, you know what? Yeah, we're no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do anything. We're, we're right. you can't drink here. Yeah, exactly. We all heard that. Yes, that's the story. Now, I, I did hear that there's one, uh, like Budweiser tent, like just outside the stadium. Only one for the entire stadium that holds something like ninety thousand people. And if you want real beer, you have to line up. And I hear the the line is hours long. Otherwise, inside the stadium, all you can get is the, the Budweiser, the NA beer. So." Uh, I don't, I haven't confirmed that there's that one tent, but someone told me that who knows, but yeah, such bullshit and Budweiser's <laughs> pissed. They, they want money back from FIFA. They were a huge sponsor. Oh, they yeah. were promised to have mm -hmm. their beer everywhere. Well, and, yeah. And their really sponsors, sponsors. Are, their sponsorships are still all around like the stadiums and whatnot. But yeah, it's not exactly. the same. It's not the but same the, when people aren't drinking your product and you can just right. see, like the logo. But Greg, so, you know, as much as we harp on Anheuser-Busch and Budweiser and all mm -hmm. of the, their garbage that they produce. Did you hear what they're doing with all the unsold beer that was supposed oh, to the go? the winning country gets it? Yeah. I <laughs> think that's actually pretty fucking cool. Yeah, whoever, so they whatever, want... Whatever, yeah, whatever country wins the World Cup is going to get all the unsold beer that was supposed to go to Qatar for the World mm -hmm. Cup. Yeah, they're actually asking for almost $47.5 million back of their $112 million original sponsorship. And then uh, whoever wins gets this giant like warehouse full of beer. It's uh, I mean, fair it's enough. Be a drunk celebration. Go nuts! I saw a headline today also about people that were wearing rainbow were not allowed to either enter. Or I don't know if they got. I don't think anybody got arrested. There's a big to do about me. that today. So I think somebody did today. The the, during the Portugal Uruguay matchup today, there was a streaking, not a streaking fan because they weren't naked. But they ran onto the field and across the field with a pride flag. Mm. Um, so I don't know. That was obviously Qatar, in that's protest. Probably worse than yeah, that's what I was saying. And I was like, in Qatar, I don't know how that holds up. So hopefully it's uh, not done by like country law. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. That'd be it. What a yeah. shit show. What a, uh, we don't need to spend time on this, but no. what a corrupt, fucked up. <laughs> I, I couldn't FIFA's agree so anymore. Fucked. Yeah. FIFA needs to be disbanded. But uh, fuck soccer and fuck FIFA. So. <laughs> I mean, we're American. We call it soccer. We're yeah. like the only country. So, hey, we've got football. I know. 
We were like, soccer, football is so bad, we're going to invent a completely different sport and give it the same fucking name. Give it the same Because it is so fucking boring. <laughs> By golly, we did it. We turned it around. We are America. the best country in the world, so clearly that's the truth. Right. America. You heard it here we're, first. Merca. Yeah. Merca <laughs> and Budweiser. <laughs> right. Mic so. drop. Enjoy your $48 million refund. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, <laughs> exactly. what, what else is going on? Oh, uh, next week, you guys, make sure you tune in. I have my interview with Ryan and Chaz of Malibu Brewing, which I'm very excited to finally release to everybody. In fact, right now, I'm drinking their uh, Oktoberfest, which I guess is like technically a month too late. But uh, I'm drinking the Oktoberfest, which is a fest beer, not a Meriton like they, you know, as typical, but it's so good. Super light. It's like five and a half. Let me look at the can here. 5.9% drinks like it's fucking four. Uh, you get a little toffee, a little honey, just a, a hint of sweetness, but I like that it's not too sweet. Just it's just real easy drinking, hot day, cold day, doesn't fucking matter beer. You know, I love when those fest beers hit almost at 6% mark and it feels like you're just drinking like a everyday lager. That's, that's how you know I what feel, I mean. It, it's, yeah. it's like, can you please stop making such delicious beer? Exactly. <laughs> but can please you make don't. this a little worse next year? Like, <laughs> It's really causing a problem in this house. <laughs> Drinkable and feeling nice? No thanks. Yeah. One exactly, or the so. other. It can never be both. Yeah. Oh, and next week, if anybody's in the area, they're doing their, uh, I forget exactly what they're calling it. But it's basically like a brewmaster's dinner where they're pairing beers with the food from the chef and they're doing like a whole, you know, guided dinner tasting. And I'm trying to go to it, but work is being a real son of a bitch. So we'll see if I get to make that. But I'm sounds super good. Their food is so good. So. Uh, if you're in the area, just tell work about it and have it be like a meeting there. <laughs> Are you coming down with a little something? It sounds like you have a little bit of a tickle in your throat. And I don't know if you know, but everybody in America is sick right now, except oh. for the three of us. No, you know what I'm so. coming down with? I'm coming down with being an idiot for eating dinner right before we recorded. So it's more of a little need to, uh, <clears throat> but I don't want to make everyone listen to that. I get oh, that too. Is you. that, is that like well. an old timey thing now? Like, am I getting old? Uh. Is that what that means? I know as the weather turns, like the last week, it's been cold here. By cold, I mean like, you know, high 50s, <laughs> 60s. Uh, as the weather turns, my vo- my allergies, you know, do a little uh, song and dance. And so I do a little extra. <laughs> so, See, I always used to make the excuse that I just ate something spicy. And then when I would eat something that wasn't spicy. It. I would still just sit there and be like, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Can can the nurse tell us that that's complete bullshit? I mean, not necessarily, because I've been doing it the mm. entire time. What's my excuse? <laughs> oh, geez, we're, we're just getting cold, fucking cold, old, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> not been right since 2019, the end of that year. Everything's been <laughs> fucked. See, for me, it's like anything like greasy. Like I had some tacos. Oh, yeah, it's your acid out. reflux. You didn't know it makes you have a dry cough. That's actually true. No, no. This, well, I have tons of acid reflux, but this this is such a great show. Uh, it's it's just in my throat. It's got your little. Mm-mm. It's not like the acid reflux. It's different. It's just like I got grease sitting around in my in my tubes. You just feel or like it's stuck in your throat, but that is called acid reflux. Just just right here. We got to do a Christmas song, but instead of like singing or music, we just got to do like the throat clearing grunts. <laughs> 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 I mean, I've been told that it's a little gravelly and a little sexy, so I'm just going to try to capitalize off of this. No, Maybe I can now be yeah, you phone take sex it operator. And run with it. That's yeah. my that's going to be my retirement job. Get yourself a 900 Maybe, number girl. Tonight? Yeah. Mel's going to like find the dustiest room in the house and put her little phone headset on. And... <laughs> Thank you for calling 1-800 hot Italians. <laughs> Disease. You're speaking to Mel. I mean, not my real name. Uh, you're speaking to <laughs> shit, not Mel. How can I make you happy tonight? Hey, baby. That's so me. You got a, anything spicy? <laughs> you got a meatball bomber? <laughs> uh, how big's your hero? <laughs> I like my men how I like my bread. Hard. <laughs> It's got to be a little crispy. Your bread is not crispy. You're doing it wrong. Nice well, long there, loaf. Oh, well, there's medication for that, luckily. <laughs> oh, oh, what else we got, Greg? Yeah, oh, I should move on. This, move this on is quickly turned next. into CBR After Dark, which is <laughs> de- debuting soon, I think. Um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving happened. The the most uh, embarrassing of, of our holidays where we celebrate how we killed a bunch of people. But 
Um, at least, you know, you get to hang around with people you'd sometimes like. And the night before, or excuse me, the night after we went to Naughty Pine because Lindsey Frey, who's like our, our favorite local artist was performing and ran into listener Michael, who <laughs> I think it was, uh, like seven o'clock our time, which meant it was nine o'clock Flex's time. You're, you're really going to put me on blast, aren't you? He, he goes, uh, hey, you think Flex is up? I was like, doubt it. And he goes, well, find out and ask him what he's drinking. I was like, he won't respond. And <laughs> Flex was like, hey, are you up and what you drinking? And I got a response at like three in the morning. Three in the oh, morning, yep. You did do it, though. I was going to say I would never even try. Just, yeah, he sent me a message. He said, hey. No. What are you drinking? Michael, uh, listener Michael wants to know, I told him you probably wouldn't be up. And I said, nope, I wasn't up. Yep. So predictable. Dude yeah. was sleeping uh, at 8 p.m. Oh, that's late for him. That's Yeah. I think uh, last week I wasn't, I didn't see past 730. <laughs> wow. Any night of the week. I, I just can't do that. But um, but yeah, so, you know, Thanksgiving happened. We made, uh, I, I told I told the parents who it's always at the parents' house. I usually end up doing most of the cooking. And I said, Hey, uh, tell the turkey to go fuck itself this year. I'm tired of eating dry ass turkey. Ooh. Let's let's get some fucking steaks going. So I convinced them to do uh tri tips. So nice. morning. Uh stuck them in the sous vide for like four hours, finished them for like ten minutes on the grill. Mm. They probably Chef's came out kiss. so good. It was so good. It was, it was like my favorite Thanksgiving meal. I like that interpretation to uh Thanksgiving. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it was it was a nice change, you know. No, no more dry ass turkey. So, uh, what about you guys, Mel? How was your? Uh... Oh, we we did the New York thing. We actually brought the kids down. We went to the parade, so that was mm. so much fun. We had a blast there, and not being sarcastic, it was really really nice. It's like sixty degrees <laughs> and not windy at all, so it's, it's like never gonna happen you, again right? in our lifetime. But <laughs> the balloons were riding perfect. People were so happy. New York was in full. Th- swing and then um we went down to some of my husband's family uh in long island uh i didn't eat turkey i didn't eat any turkey but only because i thought it was the pasta course portion and it turned out it was just a free-for-all so i'm like so we always do like a pasta course all the italians you can hear me right flex because you're looking at me like yeah i just don't know what pasta course so you mean like a Cause everywhere, like, if you're courses. Italian, you always do a pasta course. It's just multiple how we multiple courses things off. at Thanksgiving dinner. That's yes, nuts. Yeah, like, hey, let, these, let's these are the, let's, pre-game the, let's pregame a turkey feast with pasta. With Italian, ju- <laughs> yes, with pasta and bread and that like doesn't tr- that doesn't translate to galore. Me. Yeah. At, at what point do you get that crispy bread? <laughs> oh, that's that's all day long. <laughs> <laughs> the bread actually was phenomenal. Uh, they really have some great Italian markets right where they live in Long Island. <laughs> the rest of this is, is just going to sound is, filthy. No, no, it's not. It's, it's just going to sound stupid on my part. So I'm like, you know, you always have to bring something. So of course yeah. we bring wine. We bring um, some of his grandmother's favorite cherries that reminded her of her her son. Um, and that was the whole reason why we sh- we were there because she's getting a little bit older. But anyway, I digress. Um, so I'm like, oh, Uncle Joe, let me help with the tortellini. So I'm like watching the water boil. I'm watching it boil. I'm watching it boil. I'm like, when's it going to boil? When am I going to put it? He's like, what are you doing? Just put it in. So I put it in, made a lovely sauce. We're eating. We clean up. I'm kind of watching like everybody mill around and just like go full force at all of these other chafing dishes that are around. There's probably like 35 different not thinking much of it because they still have appetizers out. And then they're like, all right, dessert's ready. Let's put it out. I'm like, what happened to dinner? <laughs> they're like, where have you been? Did you drink all of the wine that you brought? Say, were you, were you or... yeah, I, I mean, I really kind of wasn't. I was trying to be on my best behavior. But um, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I just got lost in the sauce, I guess, and <laughs> missed out on the turkey. Just dreaming about that crispy bread. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> But oh, overall, it was times. really nice. It was a really nice. good time with um, some of the family we don't see very often. So That's good. That's neat. Flex, how about you guys? Oh, man, I worked. On Thanksgiving Day? Yeah, like 4 a.m. to noon. Mm. Uh, got in a pretty sweet lift because I'm a workout turkey. <laughs> uh, and then we just uh, usually cruise over to the in-laws. We had three turkey breasts this year. Two were smoked. One was oven roasted. Nice. Um, one was like dry rubbed with Cajun seasoning and it was actually like super, super fucking phenomenal and it was probably my favorite. And then there was like another lemon butter uh, injected turkey breast and that was also very good. Uh, but also the the highlight of the night was at my father-in-law. So story 
of uh, dinners at my in-laws is I usually bring my own beer, right? They'll carry Coors Light, the Michelob Ultra. They have the, the little stuff. the little shorty bottles of Miller High Life, you know, which are, <laughs> which are adorable and I'll drink. But uh, I, I walk into my in-law's house and I'm already kind of at my limit. I'm just kind of, I need, I need to drink at this point. Yeah. And I open up the fridge to put my beers in and I see there's already a couple craft beers in there. I'm like, all right, that's kind of weird. I wonder if somebody just brought these over for some other dinner and left them. So I, I took one cause I didn't think anybody else would drink them. And as I'm sitting down, uh, just shooting the shit with my father and I goes, Hey, did you, did you get any, the, the beers I brought you? And I was like, wow, that's the coolest fucking thing. That my father-in-law is the one who purposely brought beer for me. That's nice. He knows. You know, because he, know, he knows. He knows I don't like like the domestic crap, and um, I'll try and get him like some nice craft uh, lagers, because that's what he likes to drink. So if I ever find, uh, you know, just any good brewery around here putting out like a nice Czech pills or German pills or a Hellas lager, you know, I'll pick it up and drop it off for him. Uh, so I just thought that was like a super cool thing to kind of reciprocate the... Uh, the old uh yeah. like a, it's like a bond you know and a, yeah right that's that, nice that to me is like yeah that's like what thanksgiving was all about for me that yeah. to- but, totally made my night you really get along with your in-laws though right yeah they're great they gave you a really nice the lifting the squat thing last year for christmas <laughs> yeah right? i got uh yeah my yoke <laughs> squat bar for christmas which sounds I mean, really stupid to every fucking person listening right now it, but, Except uh, for people that know yeah, you, that, but yes. I would say not yeah. everybody. Shred's got a total boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's the thoughtfulness. Like they're really thinking about what you like, what you care about, and they care about you. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, they they, they fucking care 110%. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I really lucked out in the in-law department. And... You need to blow his mind and like hook him up with like a, a check dark lager. Yeah. Be like, hey, this is a lager. And then pour that shit and be like, try it. Well, see, and I thought about that. I just picked up that Schwartz beer from Eagle Park that mm-hmm. I was talking to you about a couple of days ago. And I actually thought about that. I was like, I wonder if this is okay for him. You know, because you do get, it's pretty heavy on like the chocolatey, mm-hmm. like, you know, dark roasted notes, yeah. but it's still so light bodied that it just, I don't know, it blows my mind. It doesn't make sense to me how something can be so flavorful, so good, but still be like so light and drinkable. So yeah. may- maybe I'll have to pour that out for him one day and let, let you know what he thinks. I'm excited to find out. The beer nerd in me is like, I wonder if he'd like it. Oh, I daddy. always want to know that. I love okay. picking out beer for people that don't drink craft beer just based on their preferences in mm-hmm. life and see if I nail it or not. That's I love nailing it. Like like our right? friend I was talking about earlier who we, we converted her on some sours. It's so like, we're oh, like all the same like person. This. Yeah. If you get it, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. If you get it, it's pretty good from anybody. You have nailed it. Okay. Yeah. Because they don't drink craft beer. So pretty right. good to them means that they would drink it a second time. And for me, that's a win. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah, my barometer is always, uh, would you go buy it? Oh, I've never even thought oh, I'm going to have to ask that question, yeah. Yeah, because like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm like, would you go buy it? I don't know. I'm going to use know, that Then it's like, okay, time. so it's not as good as you said. Mm-hmm. So, anywho. Uh, all right, before we get to the homie choose voicemail, let's make a call to Penn, find out what Mel's drinking over there. He calls to the bullpen for beer. As you guys know, well, maybe they don't know, Greg, but let me just enlighten your listeners that (laughs) nothing ever goes right between Greg and myself. It always goes wrong. um, And some people call that Murphy's Law. So I thought, why not go ahead and grab the District 96? This is Murphy's Law. And if you don't know about New Jersey breweries, learn about them because fuck the governor. Yes, Murphy, we're talking about (laughs) you. Uh, There's a whole series of collaborative brews that D96 is doing with New Jersey breweries to kind of bring to light what's going on in New Jersey. And um, this happens to be uh, their first collab, which is with Ghost Talk. It's a dipa. It's 8%. It is almost gone because it's just so delicious, juicy, nice finish. Looks thick really- with two C's. It, you know what? It's really kind of light for a oh. D96 beer. There are a lot thicker usually and you always get a lot of snake fruit which is like their go-to flavor 
Snake yeah, fruit. Yeah, snake fruit. Look it up. The fuck is that? Right, snake fruits. It it's like D96's fruit that they created to make their beer just the best fucking beer on the planet. But this doesn't have that. So I'm assuming it's more of a ghost hawk kind of flavor. And I really probably should describe it a little bit more, but it's just too damn good. I'm just going to drink another sip of it. No problem. I'll, I'll tell the people that apparently snake fruit is a species of palm tree. It's native it? to Java and Sumatra and Indonesia. Shocked. Yeah, if I'm looking up the right thing here. This is really citrusy. It's yeah. really, really nice it and hazy. There's not a lot of bitterness <laughs> to it at all. Did he just get grossed out? I just cut him off. I was like, stop describing that grossness because it, you just if you, it looks, looks so, disgusting. It looks so gross. <laughs> what is it? If you just you can't even it looks associate like a that with G96. Well, Johnny yeah, definitely it's... knows what he's doing. He's done really well with all of his beer, but it's oh, not... yeah. I've had a few of theirs. It's it's always spot on. Yeah, it's it's really really delicious. I wish I had more of this. Um, but yeah, so Governor Murphy, if you could please reverse the uh, legislation and let breweries do what they need to do. Stop comparing them to yeah, restaurants. Just take this hard crispy loaf and yeah, sit on it. Yeah, cuz you guys it. have gone over it in the podcast. I don't need to hit that again, but nothing's changed New so Jersey far. New Jersey so. sucks. Yeah. Jersey sucks so bad, by the way. I'm a New Yorker and people think I'm from Jersey. I am not. I'm a fantastic driver. I speak very well. <laughs> And I and so it's it like the Wisconsin right Illinois is. thing. That's funny as shit. <laughs> I'm a New York Italian. We're different. People from Illinois don't know how to drive, so that's really people funny. from Jersey don't know how to drive, and it's only because they are not allowed to make left hand turns. And I'll get a lot of flack from this if people from Jersey are listening. But they have jug handles, so you can only make right hand turns. They don't know how to make a left. So they travel in the left lane like it's the right lane. You know what I mean? Because they don't make turns left handed, like. Left hit, left is the passing lane. Everyone knows that across the country. Are they not allowed to make? No, left? they're not like, allowed to. The they're fuck? called jug handles. They have to make right hand turns. Oh, in Jersey, that. it's just stupid. It's the state. It's not the people. Well, they, they just learned how to drive there, to and the it's people. not a very good place to learn how to drive. We hope oh. it's not the people because they're like almost right up there with Alabama right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting there. We're find some New Jersey love. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get hammered by all my Jersey friends if they listen. Good thing I don't all... tell them I'm on this podcast. You should. I'm going to tell them now. <laughs> Maybe they'll listen to this in the car. Hopefully they don't get in a car accident. Uh, all right. So <laughs> let's ch- <laughs> let's check in with the homie. Chew your beer. He's bringing up something I was going to bring up, but I figure we'll let him bring it up instead. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Yo, what's up, Crap Beer Republic? Should you be here? Yes, I'm fucking drunk. And yes, this fucking message is going to be long as fuck. Uh, (laughs) I celebrated mom and dad's 80th and 70th birthday. Uh, No, dad's 80. Mom's not rocking no cradle. I was the uh, alcohol guy, so I had to bring beer. Tequila, vodka, of course, single barrel jack for myself. Uh, Two cases of Corona's Familia Especial Kawama. (laughs) Kawama means 32 ounce bottles. That's almost 40, 40 ounce. Uh, and then three cases of Modelos. More than enough beer for the people that were there. Uh, luckily, we didn't finish one case of the Kawamas. I took that home, just sipping on that, on my third one. So, uh, yeah, true your beer is a little fucking drunk. So, I saw a great post uh, that the uh, gentleman that subdued the shooter in Colorado Springs at Club Q was a uh, brewery owner, homie. A Latino at that. Uh, just to let you know, Avertida Brewing Company, Avertida means like daring female. I went into a fucking spiral of information of Avertida Brewing. They've won medals, uh, Latino based owned brewery. I think his name is Richard. I'm not sure if you, you can correct me. Out of San Diego, homie, retired from the military, moved his family to Colorado Springs, opened a brewery. Uh, I think his wife or his daughter is the brewer. He's part of it. And uh, big ups to this gentleman for doing what a lot of other people wouldn't do. Hopefully never in my life I will be in that situation. But if I ever am, I hope God gives me the balls that this gentleman has to do the same thing he did to stop any violence. And I hope everybody out there listening is, is in the same shoes as I am. So I went out. Hit the link. Thank you, Greg. And I bought some clothing, homie. Not for me. They don't have my size. They don't have the 3X Slim, but I got some shirts for my wife 
And she would proudly fucking wear this anywhere we go. This guy is a fucking hero. Uh, he, deserve, he deserves more than anything. Um, so hopefully people are out there buying everything and buying his beers and selling him out and they're making a great profit. Uh, heroes deserve more than just a high five. So thank you, Greg, for showing me this. Yes, I'm drunk, like I said. I don't know what else to say, homie. I try to make it short as possible, but fuck it. You know, I am Do part you of the really? show. Uh, no, you guys thought no about way. me coming up with something. How about uh, chew for thought, homie? How about, you know how you guys said uh, I can come up? How about chew for thought? And then we'll, I'll, we'll have a little segment. You make a little fucking jingle, jingle, jangle, jangle for me, Greg. Uh, chew for thought. And then I call in and I just leave a little fucking something, something. And it's a chew for thought instead of, a, you know, chew on this, a chew for thought about something that has to do with craft beer. All right. This is Chew Your Beer. You had to watch it. I'm fucking drunk. Three <laughs> kawamas in. And it's only fucking Tuesday. I'm on vacation. And uh, Disneyland, homie. I got I got to get into uh, Grogu's or go, uh, fucking what's his name's cantina. So I will be drinking their beers. This is Chew Your Beer. <laughs> and fuck you for it. talking shit about my long ass voicemails. But I still love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should get Mal with our super sexy raspy voice to, to yeah. record the jingle for uh, That was keeping it short. I love this guy. I mean, I yeah. just don't even know what to say. How do you follow that up? Yeah. No, There's you really can't. not a lot. Well, you followed up say. by saying, thanks, Chu, for letting us know that 32 ounces is almost 40. <laughs> thanks for the math lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's closer to 40 than it is to zero. So uh, He's going to get at me for that one. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I was going to say, that's how you get your 48 minutes of airtime, Greg. <laughs> Just give him a little second. <laughs> do your 35 and the rest is yeah. left to chew. We'll do 42 and chew it, bring us around to an hour and a half. It'll be uh, <laughs> everyone's dream come true. Dream come chew. Chew. Oh, uh, that's another good one. I like what you did there. You must yeah. be in television. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Uh, and, and back to what he was saying originally, Atrevita Beer Co. in Colorado Springs. I'm sure everyone's heard about the, the horrible tragedy that happened in Colorado Springs. But yes, the guy who took down the shooter was a cone of a brewery with his wife. It's the first. Latina owned and head brewer and also female owned and female head brewed brewery in Colorado. If I remember correctly, um, they've won a bunch of awards. I'd never even heard of them before. I've looked them up. They won a bunch of awards. Uh, if you guys want to find them, it's a T R E V I D a beer com. Like Chu said, go buy some of their shit, support them. That guy, <laughs> I heard I heard they had sold out of everything that they, they had. Yeah. They did. And I looked early because I saw Greg post it and I clicked on it. I'm like, they are out of everything, which was yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I but... figured I would wait like a month and then maybe go on there yeah, and yeah. buy something. That way to kind of spread it out a little bit. Uh, the other great thing was, I think his name is Richard. I think Chu was right. They They interviewed him about it. And dude's a fucking, he's just a good dude. And yeah. they're like, so what, what was, you know, like what was going through your head? And he's like, I, I didn't even care about anybody else. I just want to protect it, protect my family. Yeah. So I jumped on the shooter and he goes like, I just thought I have to kill him before he kills me. And I just started beating the shit out of him. I was like, fuck yeah. Like we need yeah, more people yeah. beating the shit out of somebody for doing stuff like that. So, and then I found out that apparently while he was holding down the shooter, one of the drag queens came over and beat the fuck out of him with her heel. I heard about that. And I was like, fuck yeah, that's the ultimate. That guy's shooting up a, an LGBT club, then uh, he should fucking get stomped on by a drag queen seal. That's, oh, that's yeah. the ultimate. So uh, the only bad news is they took him to the hospital afterwards. And that's what sucks about it. <laughs> but let's get inside somebody's brain and figure out why the fuck. You're intolerant of other people at this point. Like, just why? I just don't understand it. Yeah. I saw the interview with his dad, and I'm like, of all the things you're worried about him at a gay bar being gay. Not the fact right. that he's a murderer. You didn't care about that. Just that he might be gay. It's like, yeah, I was so nervous that he was gay. Just unreal. It's insane. It's, well, I uh, think that just parents need to be more open to life, you know? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe parents get a little, you know, get held be, accountable. Be, be a little more down. accepting and not so harsh on your own beliefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, it's uh, it's horrible, and we go on forever. Yeah, and, and cry about it. But uh, 
Yeah, it got dusty when I was watching a few of the guys' interviews. I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy's awesome. So, um, all right, bringing it back around to the beer stuff. Oh, by the way, 805-53-BEER is the number to call. Uh, bringing it around to the beer stuff again, McLeod Brewing out here, or McLeod Ales, really, out here in, in California, Southern California, in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, we had them on the show, I believe it was Batch 79. They've been around for quite a while. They're one of the OGs. Like a week or so ago on the gram, they posted basically like we're shutting down. They just opened a second location. We're shutting down the second location. First location shutting down. It was super weird. And then they sent a letter to the Brewers Guild that was like, we've laid everybody off. We're out of money. We can't do it anymore. And then there was a post that was talking about, well, we're going to sell the rest of our beer so that we can make some of the money back. And then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, there's a post like, come on in for pizza tonight. I was like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> What's going on? And then somebody even commented on one of those and was like, uh, you're promoting pizza, but you just laid me off three days ago. And then they promptly deleted it. But uh, I, I've heard so many weird things about what's going on. Their Instagram is a clusterfuck of we're closing down and come in for pizza and darts and beer. I, I don't know what's happening over there, but it sounds like a shit show. Obviously, you never want to see brewery close, but what the fuck? <laughs> How know. very California together. of you, McCloud. I'm on t- I'm on team I'm on that's... team just close down and sell me a dartboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here's the crazy thing. They posted the other day that said like we have too much like food uh, ingredients. We're selling butter and heavy cream. What, dude? Like the day before Thanksgiving. Like if you need any do- Thanksgiving supplies, come buy it from us. Do like, they what? own the space or are they renting it? Uh, their second location, I don't know. The first location, I believe they're renting. Um, okay. But it's it's not a landlord thing. It's it's a weird we're out of money thing. Is it a drug I, thing? Like, are you guys on drugs? It feels like it. It need, feels like a drug thing. Do you thing. need me to spot you 100? What is <laughs> happening here? I will <laughs> come through with a banjo you know? if you will just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so weird. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Um, no one knows what's happening. I... I've heard rumors of some shady business practices, but it's it's all rumors and hearsay. It's it is so fucking weird. If anybody on the inside knows anything about what's going on over there, please let us know because it is so weird and and uh, it's been around forever. All of a sudden, it, it sounds like they're all on meth. And it's also so hipster of them too. It's a Brooklyn thing <laughs> and a California thing. I'm just gonna put it out there: Californians and Brooklynites, you're all the same. You know what you're they're hipster, doing? They're cl- you're from either. Or they're probably they're probably closing down so they can have pop ups. Well, and a lot of people do that now because the overhead <laughs> is so much cheaper. But I have seen Instagram posts from business owners that are like, come upstate, they want to get out of the city, they want to have a restaurant endeavor, and they're like, close because we need a mental health day. Sorry, <laughs> we're only open three days out of the week anyway. Now we're gonna be closed for this one. Like uh, we just don't feel like going into boss. work today, we're closed. Yeah, I Never really, I'm going to joke to my boss, but like, I need a mental health day today. I hope that's all right. Yeah. Right. And it, the answer is no, it's not okay, <laughs> especially when you're a business owner. Work. Just yeah, get there the and up. then cry yourself to sleep like the rest of us right. do. It's what because our for. lives suck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come on. No, life's great. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that's I not why I'm being drink. a produce manager. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> love hey, you, Lex. I I'm like kidding. it. Oh, I've got to sell no shitty snake fruit. <laughs> Rotten ass strawberry looking <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Which I looked up and it, you peel it like garlic. Yeah, it looks like a rotten strawberry with like gross garlic inside. Yeah, and then you peel it and it's like got like cloves of garlic that allegedly have apple texture. Oh, it's I'm so weird. They're enough. like a little bit sweet though, apparently. Makes a hell of a beer. I'll say that. I believe okay. it. Very good on beer. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Uh, Cellar Maker up in San Francisco has acquired the Rare Barrel, which out here in California is, uh, is a pretty well-known sour uh, beer. Beer. Wow. Sour brewery. They're going to move all the production to the Rare Barrel facility, close up Cellar Maker's shops, and transfer everything over. It's interesting. Dang, dude. Is that uh, bad? 
Hoppy Urban Diversion. That's his favorite brewery. I met him there in San Francisco and I was there in April mm. and they make some fantastic beer. Are they going to be making the same stuff? Yeah. Apparently they're oh, going to okay. make both brands just, just now in the different location facility and they'll, they'll rebrand the spot and that kind of thing. Is what okay, cool. But, I'm fine with that. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Very strange. Uh, last week we talked about the uh, cop who got arrested on scene for being drunk. Like he pulled up to a yes. situation yes. And, and was, was drunk. Well, that Vanessa happened. was like, apparently this happens all the time. By the way, hi, Vanessa. Hey, Vanessa. Hey, Vanessa. Oh, that's getting half creepy. Uh, <laughs> she sent me <laughs> She sent me this article. A Miami DA, wow, a Miami Dade police officer was in his marked car when he was arrested on DUI charges in Hollywood, according to officials. Leopold Luis, 42, was arrested Sunday on charges including DUI and DUI with property damage. Luis ap- appeared in court on Monday where a judge granted him a $1,000 bond. That seems friendly. He later bonded out of jail and didn't speak with reporters. This officer placed the public in danger in the same vehicle that the community has entrusted as a symbol of protection. I will not tolerate any representative of the Miami-Dade Police Department to jeopardize the community's trust. First of all, does anybody look at a police car in Miami and think, I trust you? <laughs> I don't know. I think... When you wake up every day knowing your name's Leopold, isn't that enough to be <laughs> drunk at work? Like, <laughs> come on, that's, it's that's a hall pass. It it, it's a, yeah. it's a cold hard fact right there. Right? Yeah they they should raise his his allowable limit from like 08 to sixteen at that point. Yeah, Just like, yeah. All right, you can walk around at 08. You deserve it. I mean, he's a cop anyway. It's not like they follow the law. They specifically do True. not. When you're born Leopold. Like they give you two options. They're like, would you want to be like stoned to death, or would you rather just be drunk every day of your life? And it's drunk. like, I th- I think he just took the drunk every day of his life. Yeah, well, I would too. He made the right decision. <laughs> uh, over in Chaska, where Chaska? That's not a real place. Chaska, where Minnesota? Thank you. Oh, over there. Don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> over there, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Some hoser. Uh, Chaska police responded shortly after 2 a.m. on Black Friday after a crash at a, wow, crash at a gas station where they say the driver hit a light pole. When the police asked her to f- do a field sobriety test, the woman responded, what's the point? I'm drunk. Wow. <laughs> Nailed it. Just Nailed laying it. it all on the line. Yeah. Save some time. I'm hammered. Uh, she ended up blowing a point two three one. That's oh, pretty shit. high. Yeah, just slightly under three times. No That's one was injured in the crash. Not good. Yeah. Over there in Chaske. Eh? <laughs> we, we did the breathalyzer and I don't know where I'm going with this. So. He said, do that and go over there and, <laughs> and then do this. So we went to the dang and, <laughs> and then went to the biggest ball of twine. Because <laughs> that's in Minnesota. <laughs> It shouldn't exist. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. 21,140 pounds of string, ladies and gentlemen. Is that accurate? That's in the Weird Al Yankovic song. Oh, <laughs> you fucking nerd. My brother and his girlfriend love to stop at those roadside attractions. All the, like They make trips to go see those kinds of things. Your brother, the rapper? The rapper, scientist. Yes. Well, yes, him. talented. I'm kind of jealous. He does a lot of yeah. really interesting, the most interesting man in America. <laughs> we have, in Wisconsin, we have like the world's largest musky fish. I don't and, know what uh, that is. Like a, like a, it's a fish. I think Fair. we have the world's largest penny, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I've Googled some of this shit before just to see what, you know, what world's largest shit you have. <laughs> you know what we had I I where I live? The Empire Woodstock, State Woodstock, 1969. <laughs> Real oh, shit to talk about flex. Stuck. Wow. We had like eight feet of snow last week, too. We had nothing. I don't live in Buffalo. Oh. That was insane. No, it was 60 degrees here. I don't I don't know where shit is. Like New York's Buffalo. all the same. It's a bunch of people who are assholes. <laughs> Buffalo is like Wisconsin, Some, Minnesota. Like it's basically Canada. Some oh, yeah. real assholes, mainly just when you say you're upstate from my neck of the woods, which is where I live, upstate, I'm an hour outside of the city. Buffalo is five hours from me. Oh, geez. They are upstate. They get offended that you call me an upstate person. They're like, she's from the city. We call that up north. <laughs> up yeah. North? 
There's also, but Western also, there's like a long strip of Western New York that nobody really talks about ever. Don't even know what's there. Isn't that called New Jersey? I No, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's called Canada number three. You would be number two. <laughs> Western New York is Canada number three, and the rest of it is all a blur. Who knows? So wait, you you mentioned Buffalo, and you said it's five hours north. Yeah. When you talk about places, mm-hmm. do you say that's X miles away or X time I just away? say, why the fuck would I ever go there unless I was planning a trip there? Well, just any place. I only want to go to see like, oh, like, the- Niagara Falls, you say, like- eat any wings. No, I would say five hours. I wouldn't say okay. the mileage. No, I'd say hours. Any that's trip funny. that I, in a car, would go to, it would be how many hours away is it? Because I don't care the mileage. I, I just want to know, am I getting on a plane instead of driving? So this makes me overjoyed because the Californians, the skit on Saturday Night Live, makes fun of actual Californians because we don't tell anybody miles. No, go, oh, how cares? far is something away? You go, oh, it's about an hour and a half. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah but how far? Like, I just fucking told you it's an right. hour and a half. People because try and California, say that's, that's a Midwest miles. thing. And I don't oh. think that's a Midwest thing. I think it's I like think that's a, a most most people it, just want to know how long is it going to take me to get there. It's a normal I don't care about the fucking mileage. person thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who's well, get, weird and wants to know the mileage? Oh, it's 83 miles to get here. No, because if you hit traffic, it's not. It's well, still the I've mileage, but of, it's going to take you three hours. I've oh. had out of towners ask me, oh, how far is that? Oh, it's an hour and a half. Yeah. But how far is it? It's like, I just fucking told you. What do you mean? How yeah. far is it? Like, no miles. Like, what are you a oh. geography enthusiast? Shut the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> I just thought every... Place in California is three and a half hours from where you live. Like no matter where it is, it's three and a half hours. You gotta go to the grocery store, three and a half hours. Exactly. Yeah. Just basically get the fuck out of California. It's the worst place for traffic. Uh, Hell, it takes me an hour just to go downstairs (laughs) and take a shit. So (laughs) (laughs) everything. Just hours and hours. Wait, I really need somebody to just if you could put this little segment in as the preview on Instagram. Comment below and let us know. Are you the weirdo that wants to know about mileage? No one cares about mileage. It's all about time, Nobody honey. Does. This is it. Yeah. Time Nothing is will money. Promote... Yep. Time is money. Nothing will promote a craft beer podcast on the craft beer Instagram page like asking people how they describe distance. I can't wait to see who the weirdo is. And then I'm going to be like, weirdo. Chicago, Chicago from Milwaukee is something like, it's only like 80 miles. Like it's not very far. It might be yeah, a little over that. But what is know. that? How long does it take you? I don't. That doesn't. About two hours. To me. About two, two hours. hours. Okay. Because yeah. the, tra- the like traffic 80, gets so bad. We're eighty nine miles to um, Manhattan, but it really literally depends on what time of day you're going. It could take you an hour and a half. It could take you four hours to yeah, do the tomorrow. same yeah. amount. Yeah. Tomorrow I have to go to downtown LA. It's about thirty five minute or thirty five mile drive. It's going to take me about an hour and 15, hour and a half. And yeah, that's and you, all that matters. And you know what we said to everybody? We called all of our families and friends while we were going to Long Island from Manhattan. They're like, oh, what are you doing? We're like, yeah, you know, we're going to Long Island. They're like, oh, you'll be in traffic all day. Mm-hmm. That was the mileage. Traffic all day. Could you imagine answer. like getting ready to leave for somewhere? And someone's like, oh, well, why are you leaving so early? Oh, I got about, oh, I got to head 35 miles, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> right. Like, how would it work? How the fuck does that make sense? That wouldn't work out here in California because, like, why leave it? Sort of like, oh, I got about eight miles to go. It's going to take me forever. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. It's just like, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't translate to, yeah, people are dumb. Right. Yeah. If anybody is, yeah, if, if anybody does tell distance by that, that they're dumb. You heard they it from here, for me. Yeah. Flex doesn't fuck around. You're oh, dumb. Okay. Word. Yeah. I'm about to change I'm my handling. Flat. To go fuck yourself underscores in between. What's funny is that Flex and I are the same person, but he's just a hotter, younger male version of me who's a little like bit more positive about life, but we're very similar in our thought oh, process. Come on. I agree. Fuck off, people. You're dumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. You heard it here first. Bunch of positive assholes. Who knew here. this fuck would be such everybody. a touchy subject? <laughs> yeah. Everyone's getting angry over here. <laughs> New right. York well, Italian. I hope. Yeah, I hope this podcast was good for your eight mile commute or your thirteen mile commute, or your fucking eighty mile. I don't know. Either way, it was around an hour, so all the listeners are gonna be so excited that it went over forty two minutes. While I'm gonna be staring at my computer editing this thing, going, "God 
damn it. Chew's creaming in his pants over there. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, half of this is thanks to his voicemail. <laughs> and podcasts are always longer when Mel's involved because I don't shut the fuck up. You're welcome. Well, that's that. I was going to say it. I yeah. was looking and forward Norway. to, to completely hang, hanging out with Mel tonight and just basically shooting the breeze because it's, it's so easy with her. Yeah. I'm trying to say. Very easy like that, Flex. I don't know if you know about that about me. She, she's, wow. she's, she's a wonderful... Uh, yeah. Wonderful addition to the trio. That is true. That's Her nickname is Sunday morning. So there you go. I'm gonna easy like Sunday morning. No, that was okay. good. Yeah, that was, okay. I, th- I thought you were just gonna like transition out from that. That was wonderful. I should have. Anybody with any comedic chops whatsoever would have just been like, "Keep going." That makes it funnier. And I was like, "No one reacted." Come on, fuckers! <laughs> I'm sitting over here with my jaw in my lap. Mm. Wow, that was good. Your jaw. Huh? Wow. 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 I've been doing that for like two weeks now. I can't stop Same. doing it. <laughs> wow. All my right, kid my I... kids say something to me and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> They're like, fuck off, Dad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, you sound like the guy from Marley and Me. What's what's going on? <laughs> Here comes the music. And then I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Here comes the pain. Uh thank you all for listening, for sticking through. And uh, we appreciate you. Find us at craftbeerrepublic.com. Find Mel at beergirl underscore Melissa. Thanks for hanging out with us. Find Flex on the gram at flexmeabeer underscores in between. Uh, I believe that's everything. Oh, 805 beer Don't forget to call us. I hope everyone out there stays very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Especially Vanessa. Vanessa.